The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. What is best case scenario for the New York Jets in the 2024 NFL Draft? We're going to talk about that and much more with today's guest. The Buffalo Jet fan joins us in his weekly spot. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Aaron freaking Rodgers. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Chat, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. How about that brand new intro? Man, it feels like last year again. Aaron Rodgers throwing passes to Garrett Wilson. Aaron Rodgers throwing passes to Brees Hall. It's good to see that Rodgers realizes that Brees Hall could be used out of the backfield. Man, does that get me fired up. You know what also gets me fired up? The fact that the draft is next week and we could finally move forward with all of our lives. And joining me right now to talk about the draft and much more in Bobby the New York Jets is the Buffalo Jet fan in his weekly spot. BJF, welcome back, my friend. How are you? Good, man. Uh, one more week, and then we can uh, put this all behind us. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do it anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we start, you know, screaming and yelling at each other over Brock Bowers, and we talk about your great tweet from the other day on the five best case scenarios. For the New York Jets, let's talk about something that I think 99% of this fan base can agree on, and that the new uniforms, aka the old uniforms that are now new again, they look awesome. So your takeaway when you saw the official announcement on Monday that the legacy jerseys are here to stay going forward. Oh, yeah. I mean, Woody Johnson throwing the Jet fan base a bone. They're beautiful. They're clean. They're crisp. Um, definitely an upgrade from the arcadish font from before. I'm excited to get some shirts and some hats, get some merch. It's a great look. Super stoked. Hopefully, I think it might be a repeat of Bills and Jets week one, and we can don them again. And, and this time, Aaron Rodgers is going to play the whole game, and we'll go That's home right. happy. That's right. It won't even take over time to beat the Bills this time. No, no. <laughs> Which one's your favorite combo? For me, it's green on white. Uh, I, I don't know, man. That, that Jermaine Johnson black looks really, really slick. Yep. Um. Uh, they're all nice, man. I love them all. If I if I had enough money, I would have every jersey that's on the screen right there. <laughs> you hear that, folks? Send in some super chats so we could <laughs> pay it to uh, the Buffalo Jet Fan Jersey Fund right there. A lot to get into with you now. You, full disclosure, you know, I I was trying to come up with different things we could talk about because at this point, it's like uh, what hasn't been said. But right. you made it easy. You put out a tweet the other day. Five best case scenarios for the Jets first round selection. And we're going to go through each one here and you can expand on why you think it's the best scenario. Now you rank them. So would you like to go from five to one or one to five? Um, Let's start with the best, man. Let's go start with number one. All right. Number one, BJF, what is the best case scenario in your mind for the Jets in the draft? I think number one, Romo Dunze is there at 10 because it's just a clean, easy pick. There's no trading. And I think that Odunze is my favorite player. That's that's there's a realistic chance he'll be there at 10. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik neighbors. That's not going to happen. And I think he's a perfect combination of immediate impact because he'd be a starter in 11 personnel. And Mike Williams is 30 off the ACL. I don't know if Romo Dunze doesn't see a higher target share than 30-year-old Mike Williams, at least pretty close. Uh, but you start three receivers and 11 personnel. Um, the talent is there. I think he's definitely one of the top 10, at worst, 12 to 15 players in the draft by everyone's account. And 
it, there's a future need there too because Mike Williams and Alan Lazard, the two veteran receivers that we have behind Garrett Wilson in the last year of their contracts and behind them are, you know, we like Gibson and Brownlee, but they're UD second year UDFAs who still have a lot to prove. So I, I think for me, Odunze is really, I mean, there's such a thing as a perfect pick, I guess, but I think he checks a lot of boxes. If they could get him and not have to trade a pick, I think I would agree with you. That to me is like the, the most ideal of ideal scenarios that, or what you probably have is the number two scenario here on your list. And that is Joe Alt, the left tackle from the Irish from Notre Dame. He makes it to the jets at number 10. Now I won't go as far as Mike Francesa did saying that Joe Douglas should be shot. If Alt falls to 10 and the jets choose not to take him. but man, if Alt's there at 10, I, I feel like that's like the cleanest O-line prospect in this class. That'd be a home run pick by this team. Yeah, definitely less likely that he falls to 10, I think, uh, than Odunze, because Odunze really just have to have Chicago go defense, and then he, he could fall there. Um, but with Alts, I do think if the Chargers go wide receiver and the Titans like just one offensive lineman better than him, which people are really high on, J.C. Latham and uh, Olu Fashionu, and then, um, yeah, then you have four quarterbacks going high, and then he could be there at 10. Now, somebody might jump the market for Alts and, and all of that, but I, I think if we're talking ideal scenarios, uh, the two guys who there's at least a sliver of hope they make it to 10, who would be run the card into the podium, would be Romo Dunze, wide receiver Washington, and Joe Alt, tackle Notre Dame. Your thoughts on the other offensive line prospects in comparison to Alt, BJF? Like when you break these guys down, is Alt clearly your number one? How how far is the the divide between tackle one versus tackle two and three for you? Well, uh, I mean, I've only watched the, the top six guys, but I, I will say... I think it comes down to style and, and positions like Olu Fashanu, If you really need a left tackle, he's there for you. He's a clean pass protector. I do think there's limitations in his run game. I think teams will care about that. I think the jets will care about that as they shift their personnel to a more power uh, gap scheme and away from the, the zone stuff uh, over the past two years. And then, you know, you have Fawanga and JC Latham who are two powerful plug and play right tackles who both maybe you could see as guards and Fontenot has really grown on me because uh, Fontenot really is the only offensive lineman that can do a be a at worst a backup at four spots as a rookie. So you know he's going to play what minimum six, seven, eight games if you're backing up uh, both guard and both tackle spots. Do that and be a potential long term left tackle solution uh, after Tyron Smith likely departs next year. So. Fontenot doesn't have the, you know, he doesn't have the Amarius Mims level traits, which nobody does. Gosh, I don't know where he's going to go. That dude is, that dude is built from another planet. So he's a monkey wrench in this. He's really green, but Fontenot is a really high floor get uh, that I think comes in and provides immediate depth with that bonus of being a long-term left tackle. So I, I think Fontenot might be my second favorite option for the Jets if Joe Alt um, is, is gone, but I do think it's a bit of a drop off though. We're talking with the Buffalo Jet fan, of course, a established, fantastic Jet content creator. He'll be joining us throughout next week on our mega cast live from Vegas at Circus. So he'll be on the lookout for a BJF appearance or two during that broadcast. Of course, if you have a question for Buffalo Jet fan or myself to answer, best way to get it read is to super chat it. And if you want a channel membership, the chance to get gifted a membership, you have to like the video if you're watching live right now because then you're eligible based on the YouTube algorithm to be gifted a membership. Now, you know, if you look at the third scenario on your list here, this to me, I, I mean, we're talking about best case scenarios, right? So obviously this would be incredibly exciting. It's tough to picture how this could happen, but how about the Jets trading up for Malik Neighbors without having to give up next year's first round to paint the scenario where that actually could happen? Yeah, and, and Marvin, trading up for Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't even on my list. I just think it's too unrealistic. You'd be competing with like quarterback offers. You definitely have to give up the, the first next year. You don't have a second rounder this year. But I do think if neighbors, like he's not making it to 10 and probably not even making it out of the top six. But if four quarterbacks go off the board in the top four, which Peter Schrager had happening in his last mock draft, and Peter is as plugged in as anybody. So not all mock drafts are created equal, guys. Peter, Peter Schreiger's mock draft is worth is worth looking at more than mine, right? I'll tell you that. Um, but then if the Chargers go offensive lineman and then the Giants go Marvin Harrison Jr., boom, neighbors is there. Tennessee desperately needs a tackle. They have DeAndre Hopkins, uh, they still have Traylon Burke, so they maybe not don't want to give up on first rounder from a couple years ago, and they just gave Calvin Ridley the bag. So 
I think they might be convinced if you're the Jets and you say, hey, we'll give you maybe our fourth rounder this year, next year's second rounder, you can come back. You could still probably get one of the first two tackles off the board and have some draft capital to boot. And the Jets come up and get an immediate injection of life and speed and yak and absurd playmaking in a Malik neighbors who look, when you talk about wide receiver versus pass catcher, the way I view it is, or I'm sorry, pass catcher versus O lineman. The way I view that debate is offensive lineman raises the floor of the ceiling. I think if you told me the Jets ceiling fell apart, I'd probably tell you they faced offensive line injuries and Aaron Rodgers is banged up. But if you tell me they won the Super Bowl, you're, it's because they got a dude who is a difference making playmaker. Uh, and Malik neighbors is as good as anybody not named Marvin Harrison Jr. in this class. Totally agree. If they got neighbors, even though he's maybe similar to Garrett, uh, he's a great player. You know, I watched Malik Neighbors tape. I see Garrett Wilson at Ohio State. So I'm right there with you. In this scenario number four in your top five, trade back and take an offensive lineman in the teens. This to me is certainly a scenario that a lot of Jet fans are pounding the table for, myself included, if they can't get a Dunze, if they can't trade up and get neighbors in a, in a scenario where they don't have to give up the first you know the, the I, I agree with your list so far through the first three this one here if they were to trade back what would you expect the offer to be give me some teams you think that could make sense and obviously some potential prospects in this trade down that you would feel comfortable the jets taking if they move back a few spots yeah i think well if if the top three receivers and joe alt are gone which is a plausible scenario i would be on the phone trying to move back because I like Brock Bowers, but if I could move back and get some extra draft capital and I miss out on him, I would go to sleep just fine. And then that second tier of offensive linemen, I think you could rank like the second through sixth offensive linemen almost in any order. Uh, we don't know how the Jets feel about them, but I do think moving back and if you look at to get a second round pick straight up, you probably have to go back to like 18. I don't know if like the Bengals or Steelers or somebody 18 to 20 wants to come up, but I think a creative way, a creative solution to get a second round pick could be to send pick 10 and a fourth round pick, maybe in exchange for the Raiders pick 13 and second round pick, something like that, where you do a, a swap there. So somewhere between like 13 and 15, I know there was that Colts rumor. Um, I think that would be your best, I would love a second round pick because then it just sets up so nicely for offensive linemen in, in round one and then wide receiver in round two, because, you know, by, by the time you get to 72, you know, wide receiver, it's deep, but man, it is going to be pretty picked over. Uh, so that would be my ideal scenario. You move back to 13 or 15 and you're able to swing a fourth rounder with it to get a second round pick in this draft class. And then of course, here we go, folks. Scenario number five in Buffalo <laughs> Jet fans, top five. Best case scenarios for Joe Douglas in the draft. Stick and take tight end. Brock. Bowers. Did somebody say Brock Bowers? All right. Break it down. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like Brock Bowers uh, a lot. I just think those other scenarios I would prefer – and I think most Jeff fans have come to the point where it's something that you, at least you know it kind of has to be part of the discussion. He's going to be most likely a top 15 pick. He might be the best offensive player available there when when they pick. Um, and he he's awesome, man. He's a He was a phenomenal player at Georgia. I think he could get on the field with Tyler Conklin. I think he'd start. I think the biggest the player who would see the biggest reduction in their role as a consequence of drafting Brock Bowers would actually be Alan Lazard, not Tyler Conklin. The Bills and uh, had da Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid both on the field for 60 plus percent of the snaps. So he'd play right away. He'd be really good. I just think the thing that I keep coming back to with Brock Bowers that makes him further down on this list. I just think the transition is cleaner for Odunze of exactly what his role is going to be like, boom, he's your ex receiver you know, hop release deep over, uh, you know, late hands, contest to catch. Boom. He's that's what Deandre Hopkins does all day. It's so clear, but with Bowers, it, it's hard to find dudes in the NFL really like him. It's, it's like Debo kind of, but there's only one Debo. And also if he's just an, if he kind of busts a little bit and he's just okay, which would be a disappointment if he's an okay tight end, we had that in Tyler Conklin and that costs you seven, 8 million. But even if you take an offensive tackle, who's, they kind of disappoint for a first round pick. 
and they're a serviceable starter, serviceable offensive tackles, we see it in free agency get 16, 18. Juwan Taylor, 22 million a year. So the cost, the, the cost to replace there is something I keep going back to with Bowers. He's a stud. I'll be excited if we get a man. Uh, I just think there most likely is going to be either an offensive lineman or receiver. I would prefer to take a pick 10. Great, great point there. I mean, no one's talking about that. You know, just the drop off how like, yeah, a guy who's not a generational lineman at pick 10, but is OK. That's more yeah. valuable than a tight end who's OK. I could get that in free agency yeah. with Conklin. And he'd have to be like Tama. a top three tight end to justify it, you know, and maybe he will be. It's just a, it's just a little bit more, more risky. Yeah, no doubt. Now, I noticed in your top five, you didn't have this scenario. The Jets selecting Knoble out of college. Well, that's already a given. Yeah. You don't think he's going to be there, do you? No, they'd have to probably trade up. Uh, he's probably going to go before Marvin Harrison Jr. On the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Knoble out of college. Yeah! Look, if they end up with Knobel, I don't care what happens the rest of the draft. I think the Jets are winning the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, guaranteed. We would get I, – I can't wait for my custom Knobel jersey to come in. <laughs> if you tuned in live right now, hit the like button. Down below, you'll see a bunch of Jets legacy jerseys that are on sale courtesy of Fanatics. Get your new Jets gear. Shout out to Fanatics for partnering up with us. Here on the channel, right down below, use my affiliate link. It will take you to the Fanatics website and purchase your Jets gear. Speaking of Jets gear, I'm just throwing this out there, BJF. Look on the screen real quick. That's what I'd like to see the Jets jersey looking like this upcoming February, if you catch my drift. All right? Oh, yeah, man. Now, Garrett Wilson in number five looks awesome as well. He looks so good in number five. It's crazy. Yeah, He just got like, they should have increased his Madden rating just by him switching to number five. Yeah. I mean, G5, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I am in. All right. Some super chats to get into here. Let's get to this one from Chef Kevin. He submitted this one before the show. Kevin, hopefully on replay, you see us addressing your comment, my man. Jake, I won't be able to catch the show live due to the restaurant being busy. I wanted to tell you how much we appreciate your shows. The calls have been great and the energy is high. Let's hit 37K. If you're tuned in live right now, help me get to 37,000 subscribers. Right now I'm at 36,975. So we're 25 away, people. If you could subscribe, it's free. You could hit that subscribe button on the right-hand side. It truly goes a long way. And, and Chef Kevin, you got to let me know where your restaurant is so I can pay you a visit. JR Jet with a super chat. He says... AR looking good already. Let's go, Jake. Let's go, Jets. Hashtag Jet up. Look, I think it's great that Rodgers is at the voluntary stuff. Everything they have said about this guy, oh, bad teammate, not going to show up to any of the workouts. It continues to be total horse crap. Rodgers has been to every workout since he's been a Jet. Cool seeing him out there throwing passes to Garrett and Brees. Like, that excites me. I know it's, you know, it's voluntary workouts in April, but all the chemistry and cohesion and just erasing the stink from last year that this team yeah. can do now, that's good, not bad. No, it felt good to see him out there. It felt good to see him on the practice field throwing. Um, the most recent update we have from him medically is that he can do everything practice-wise besides sprint full speed, which were in mid-April. So leaves you feeling good. about. I mean, if he was even considering playing at the back end of last year, it leaves you feeling pretty good about the beginning of this season. Super stoked, man. Uh, I just... I can't wait. I'm so I think I'm even I don't know. I'm getting more excited even than last year just because it was such a gut punch that I, it's like a revenge tour almost. It feels like and people who are writing off Aaron Rodgers and look, man, if he's not your cup of tea with stuff, he says that's fine. Um, but all I'll say is I've never heard a single person who has coached him or played with him say anything bad about him ever. 100 percent. It's just media. It's just media. Always media and like Bears fans to have his own, <laughs> you know? Uh, day boss has given the gift of five memberships. That's right. Count them five. Boom. The following five people just became as maniacs. Benny baboon, James Harrison, Carrie Johnson, jet life, three, two, one, Matt P who else is going to make it rain today. Shout out to day boss for paying it forward. If you get gifted a membership, consider paying it forward to someone else in the chat. Appreciate that. Uh, BJF, obviously, you know, Knoebel continues to, you know, rise up draft boards, right? So I put in an interview request with his agent to get Knoebel on the show. So are you down to uh, maybe interview Knoebel right now? I would love to. 
All right. So without further ado, folks, uh, we're going to do this live and hopefully the internet connection is okay. We go live to Knoble. Uh, Knoble, thanks for joining the show. How are you? Hey, Mr. Jake. Thanks for having me on the Tube You show. Happy to be here, man. Uh, so before we do anything, uh, can you clarify just the proper spelling of your name? My name? Well, it's Knobly, but I lost my birth certificate and they spelled it wrong <laughs> on my application to college. You could spell it with an E or an A or a C or a K. It's all dope all the time, bro. Uh, where are you from? Your fans are not really familiar with you. I'm from Niau, a small island near Hawaii. Uh, we got like 350 people living here, and 37 of them are my relatives. We got one university, and our football team has 13 players, which is great because we get to play <laughs> offense and defense. Wow. All right. So, you know, obviously you really have risen up draft rankings because the lane train has hyped you up and you have massive expectations on you now from a lot of Jet fans out there. How do you handle, you know, all the all the, all the hoopla, all the expectations that surround you? Damn, bro. I owe that guy my <laughs> life. A few weeks ago, I was working in my uncle's macadamia nut farm and now I'm visiting NFL teams all over the country. They say in Google searches, I'm the third most searched for name next to Diddy and Zach Wilson's mom. <laughs> wow. Uh, when did you realize you were a special talent, Kenobo? Why did this happen? Well, I ran circles around my teammates, but in two years, we haven't won a game here. Honestly, my coach calls me a useless wet bag of shit. Not sure what that means, but I guess I'm good enough to enter the draft. All right. On that note, what would it mean to you to play for a team like the Jets, play in front of a guy like Lane Train and, and so many diehard Jet fans? Man, that would be crazy. I would be a weapon for that team because I can play any position. One time I caught my own pass, scored, and then kicked the extra point. Making the lane train proud is all I'm about, Mr. Jake. Choo-choo, mother effing choo. <laughs> Peace out, bitch. Kenobo, thank you for the time. All right, well, I didn't think we'd get him, but shout out to Kenobo for coming on the show. Uh, the, the, the reach of the Jake Osmond show knows no bounds. That's unreal. What do you think Charles is going to say to that one? I mean, that's that's as real as it gets. <laughs> He's going to come in hot. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. A lot of people want in on the conversation. Let's go to the leader of the Bauer Boys, Gary. Hello, Gary. What's going on, Jake? What's up, Gary? What's going on, Buffalo? I'm thinking I love what you put together. I think the last option... Take Bowers at 10 is the best option on the table. We don't have to give anything up to get it. We can keep the rest of our draft capital. And we get a special player who can play in any offense, who was the best player on the best team for three years, playing in uniquely different offenses. And you can line them up anywhere and do anything with them. I think it's time to go with Bowers. Yeah, I don't think the gap between the first option and the last option is that huge, man. Brock Bowers, Brock Bowers is that guy, man. He dominated the SEC as a freshman. Like he is a stud. My problems with Brock Bowers have nothing to do with the player or any. I think he's been over scrutinized. People say like he can't play in traffic or make contested catches, and it's like, dude, log off a of PFF for a second and go watch college football. Like we got, we got to stop overcomplicating it. Nobody could, nobody could tackle him, and he was like. Paul Bunyan running through children for three straight years. I've never seen anything like it. It just comes down to like the stuff I mentioned with maybe the offensive line or wide receiver being a better option for the Jets, but he would add an injection of playmaking in this offense. And look, Aaron Rodgers would love himself some Brock Bowers, no doubt about it. I, I wanted to, I had two like little concerns about him and I, I just kind of wanted your take on him. You know, his, his yak, a lot of his yak that he got in college came on him like carrying guys like Mark Bavaro. Is that really going to fly in the NFL? I mean, he's not going to carry guys on his back in the NFL, right? I mean, they're going to bring him down. And the second and the more concerning one to me is his touchdown production went down. Like his freshman year, he had 13 touchdowns. And I talked to uh, Andrew about this. He just thinks it's because they had so many mouths to feed. But his touchdown production did drop from 13 touchdowns his freshman year to six his junior year. Is that something you would be concerned about? Knockouts don't matter if you're landed of jabs. Yeah, ladies, you can do you can do a music. Nice <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, you, uh, well, Brock Bowers did have the ankle injury, and there, there were suggestions that he might shut it down for the year and head into the draft. Um, so de- definitely, like, I would have liked him to be better in contested catch balls and in the red zone. His his most recent year, you know, he was at 22% for contested catches, and some of those uh, missed ops came in the end zone. Um, but for his career, like the two years before it, he was above 65. So I'm hoping that had more to do. I'm just going to trust the bigger sample size there. But you can't you can't completely ignore it. Like it's part of his resume and in his last year, the the yak stuff. I mean, yak is a very sticky stat. Like guys who get yak in college get yak in the NFL. Garrett Wilson was the best yak player of that class. I don't know if it'll look as cartoonish, but um, it is the SEC that they didn't have the most loaded schedule um this past season you know played alabama they got two first round corners uh i do think the yak will translate and when you look at the, his yak is like he is leagues ahead of everyone when you look at the the yak analytics and just with your eyes it's really impressive i think that's the i think the right away he comes in and he can do that at a high level david writes in i like the new emojis the henny and fireman ed that's right if you're a channel member ladies and gentlemen the fireman ed emoji is now live. We are another 37, now 32 actually, members away from another emoji being added. But we needed to add the fireman Ed emoji because, well, come on now. We are a Jet channel. All right, more calls right now with the Buffalo Jet fan. Buffalo Jet fan, meet the big fella. He's up next. What's up, big fella? What's up, guys? How you doing? What's going on, man? All right. Um, Jake, yesterday you had a guy, Vinny. He was the guest. Uh, Vinny. Are you talking about Frankie? Frank, I don't know what the hell his name was. He didn't know who the hell Fatanu was. I don't give a shit what he says. Because Fatanu is the guy who we should pick. Well, he just didn't think that he was a great going to be a great left tackle. He thought he's better as a guard. Dude, he was he's given bullshit excuses about like, oh, he punches wrong or some shit. The guy plays left tackle for Washington, kept Penix safe, and Penix is injury prone. Guess who else is injury prone? Our quarterback. Well, he's not injury prone, but he's coming off an injury. We got to keep him safe. We got to keep him safe. Now, our third round, our third round pick. I'm thinking I was big on Tez Walker. Now I'm going Malachi Corley. I think he'd be oh, yeah, perfect yeah. for the slot. I think I think you know we need the yak and Rogers would they would eat it up. So that's what I'm looking for. I went. Let me tell you a little story. I went to the store with my daughter to get like some stuff for her school. And I was thinking I, I passed by a book and it said, uh, you know, all these recipes and stuff. Right. Well, I found a jet green enchilada recipe, <laughs> jet green enchilada chicken soup recipe. Oh so, no. Charles, stop holding on to your recipe. Like you're holding on to your nuts during a penalty kick and let's go. I'm going to post this in the discord. Everybody check it out. And, uh, <laughs> Let's go Jets. BJF. I mean, what a call by the big fellow there. I mean, it, that, that, <laughs> they just kidding. had it all. They just had it all. <laughs> I, I I think the big fellow, though, is falling into the uh, the type of fan that you brought up to me before we started the show, though. This is my prospect, and if you don't see it, ugh. Right? I mean, there's a lot of various opinions on all the prospects, including the offensive line. Yeah, and also I just want to set myself up to enjoy draft night. Like, I think if you're like, it has to be this or it's going to suck, then you're, pro- you know, probability wise you're probably you're probably gonna have a tough time next thursday night <laughs> um i like fatanu man a lot i would agree with that part of the big fella i think that he my only problem with fatanu is i do think that there's play strength limitations at 315 pounds but he fires off the ball like a like an absolute dog um he 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 has foot speed for days he glides he's long enough to be a tackle even though his like body is kind of guardy um and he's a little bit older and i don't i don't think he has the those like gargantuan freak traits that you see in like the tyron smith all pro level tackles but he's a very high floor player and i do think he can come in and number one maybe he beats out john simpson for left guard right away and you know morgan moses probably gets the nod there but is it crazy that the 10th overall pick beats out a 33 year old morgan moses off surgery like at least he's making those guys sweat in camp and worst case he's a backup at all four spots and i think i do project him to be a a left tackle and maybe not that all pro caliber ceiling like with a mims or with a latham where like if they hit the traits are nasty but their floors are lower font no like trading back and getting fatano to me just feels like all right like this is really good business and you can't be too 
mad about it. As far as the other player he mentioned there, Malachi Corley, wide receiver. The Yak God was his nickname. He played at what, Louisville? Your thoughts on oh. him as a prospect? Or was it Western Kentucky? Western Kentucky, yeah, correct. Yeah, they both um, were red. Yeah, he, and you know what, especially if you don't get Bowers, I do think he could do like some of the, the some of the positional versatility and like slot yak stuff that Bowers would be really good at. And he was the sec, he's the second nastiest yak dude in terms of the pass catchers in the class. Um, like five, he's a former running back built like one, 5'11, 215. I think he can bring a Cordero Patterson element to your offense where he's like your running back two, your wide receiver three. And then the new, the new kickoff rules that lend themselves more to a running back skill set, he would kill it right there. So, he doesn't give you that maybe that pipeline like X receiver that you would like. Okay, after Mike Williams leaves, you have like whatever Brendan Rice or someone that you like like that that could come in and fill that role. But dude, it's just about talent, and I think Malachi Corley comes in, and I think he's probably your third best receiver. I would like him probably over Lazard, Brownlee, and Gibson right away. And uh, Aaron Rodgers, his MVP seasons, the most two recent ones he had the third highest percentage of his yards come from yak as any quarterback in the NFL. If you look at his spray chart, he likes to go down the boundary deep and he likes short yak intended throws into the flat and Corley would eat with that all day. Hit the like button. If you're tuned in for a chance to get a channel membership, appreciate everyone for their support. T Rivera has a super chat. He cuts the line. T Rivera writes in two legends, my Puerto Rican slash Irish BJF and my favorite ginger man, Jake Asman, LFG, <laughs> J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Love it. So Matt O'Leary slander in the chat, I guess, if you're his favorite ginger. Oh, that's a good point. I'm not even Irish, too, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell people I'm Irish. That's fine. I used to speak for a whiskey company on Houston radio, and one of the it was one of the taglines was, uh, trust me, I'm Irish. <laughs> that's funny. And I'm like, and that was a joke. I'm not actually Irish. Uh, all right, more calls right now. And I have a very specific question for our next caller because earlier today a meeting of the minds happened on long island bjf two esteemed jet fans got together for lunch to discuss draft strategy that was neil from garden city and rob from glenhead and rob has called in right now hello rob how was the lunch awesome real good real good and uh, you know the meeting of the minds here i mean we got together started talking I wanted to start off just real quick by saying thank you to Kings of Dreams for gifting me the membership. He's a super duper cool guy. And I, not because he gifted me the membership, but the guy knows how to give back. And that's a special trait. You know, a lot of people don't. And he claims that he's fortunate in life and he gives back. That's super duper kind of him. And I just wanted to throw that out there first. Um, second of all, yeah, Jake. We had a great lunch. We talked about things. Um, I was a little bit surprised when he told me that you said that you would even take Harrison over Ayuk if he was available. Um, well, yeah, I don't know I about don't, that. I would, I, I, but I don't have to give up anything to get Harrison. That, like, it was just like, just pick the player. And I get Harrison on a rookie contract for five years. That was the point. Okay, I got you. I got you. But what about talent-wise? Would you still think uh, if everything was even? And same question to you, uh, BJ. Uh, if everything was even, would you take Ayuk or Harrison on a thinking he's going to be so super special? I, I think Ayuk's a better player right now today. But like, if you're building a team, you don't have to pay Harrison for five years. That's why. I, that's why I answered the question the way I did on the first show today. And what do you think, Buffalo? Yeah, I couldn't rank um, as good as Harrison is. Like Brandon Ayuk was a top eight receiver in the NFL last year and had historic efficiency. So, yeah, I wouldn't bet on Marvin Harrison Jr. being better than Brandon Ayuk. But, yeah, I mean, you have to get – would I give up, I don't know, what, trade pick 10 for pick 31 to get to get Ayuk and then pay him $27 million a year? No, I would rather – take those assets and go up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. and have him on cost control for five years. All right. I have a couple of more things, Jake, before you uh, cut me off. But um, I just wanted to also say um, that um, we met uh, a waitress there. I was uh, scrolling through my phone and this waitress comes up to me and she sees my jet shirt. And she goes, oh, you're a Jet fan, huh? And I was like, yeah, I'm a big Jet fan. She goes, I love the Jets too. And we got into a great conversation. 
Uh, I don't know if you saw that picture I sent you, Jake, with her with Wesley Walker. Yeah, I saw it. Did, did you get that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so she's actually, she's actually good friends with Wesley Walker. So I thought that was really, really cool. And I, I told her about your show, and she was like, let me take a picture of your show. And I was like, you should go on. Just mention my name. Uh, her name is uh, Anitra. Uh, very kind woman and stuff. And we were talking. So I thought that was really super duper cool. Um, and then did probably get, the last. Did you get her that, number, Rob? Uh, will, will there be a date? Maybe. Oh. She was very. But this way, she was very aggressive. Oh, hey now. Yeah, she gave. She gave me her number. Yes, she did. So oh, wow. I don't know if it turns well, out to, in my. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. And probably the last thing was uh, the Bowers thing. I, I'm sorry. Hey, congrats, congrats on the sex. <laughs> <laughs> probably the last, last thing I was going to say about the Bowers thing. Uh, uh, I don't know, Buffalo. I, I know you think this guy is very talented, and you would be happy if the Jets got him. But uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't see him being, uh, a, like Jake said, a 1,000 yards, six, seven touchdowns his first year, I would feel a lot more comfortable on picking either a really uh, a good chance on a lineman, like uh, obviously uh, um, like a Fashano or, or uh, a Fawaga or a Fontenou now is really creeping up now. I've been hearing too many things. This guy can play four different positions. He just seems like he would be a perfect fit for us. And then if we went down and we picked like a Brian uh, Thomas Jr. Uh, as a wide receiver, I mean, I would be very happy with that. What do you think like about that? that? I like all that stuff too, man. I like I like all those options too. No doubt about it. I like Fontenot trading down to 15 and getting Brian Thomas Jr. and getting a third round pick or whatever. That, that That's awesome too, man. Live look at Rob next week. Ah! <laughs> shout out to mike breen <laughs> let's, let's go rob i love it how about neil playing matchmaker today i love that. i gotta get neil if you're watching call in i want to hear about th this experience with rob all right uh let's see do any super chats we do not have any super chats so we'll get right back to the calls right now let's go to phenom hello phenom what's up boys uh we're here. The draft is almost here. But did you guys get a chance? No, let me first ask BJF a question. Do you have a scenario where the Jets trade down and get a second round pick? Yeah, I think we um if they traded down not too far, like 13 to 15, that may not be worth a second round pick, but they could they could send their fourth round pick along with pick 10 in exchange okay. for say the Raiders pick 13 and their like pick 44. Uh, I think that would be worth it. Or if the, there's just a team desperate for a quarterback, like the Raiders want to come up and you pay, charge them a quarterback tax. But I feel like most likely you'd have to kick something back in and you wouldn't get a second round pick straight up, at least by the value chart, unless you go all the way back to like 18 with Cincinnati. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, you know, did you guys, did one of you guys see the um, uh, interview with uh, Pat McAfee with Bill Belichick? I did. I watched the whole thing. What happened? Unbelievable, man. So he said one thing that really caught my eye. He said, the draft is like a jigsaw puzzle. There's just not one piece that puts the puzzle together. So uh, I would I would definitely like to get, get more picks if we could and to build this whole uh, draft board. Because if the Jets mimic what they did in free agency in the draft, I think that could be a winner too. So we picked up an offensive tackle, we picked up a receiver, we picked up a running back or safety. In this draft, to mimic our uh, you know, offseason uh, free agency, I think that would probably work. Yeah, look, I, to me, if you can't get one of the big three receivers, I've been, hey, let's trade back and get more picks the whole time, Phenom. So I, I'm right there with you. I would say this, though, about Belichick talking about the draft. His draft record was abysmal his last yeah. like five to seven yeah. years in New England. So let's not act like he always got it right. You know, that's a big reason why he's no longer the coach. I think Belichick could still probably coach at a above average level if he had a quarterback. But the reason why he ultimately got fired is post Brady, the rosters were garbage. Brady was elevating crap for a long time there. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on offense that man, they hadn't drafted a good receiver and like got almost like a record. Crazy, crazy. Uh, let's see. 
Lawrence writes in, Jake, my mom's a Finns fan. What should I do? Ah, the only thing you can do, you got to send her to Stupid Town. Just shut the fuck up. I did not ask for the dim opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Big fella writes in, Rob needs to double date with V-Man. That'd be an interesting date. That'd be uh that'd be an interesting one. Is V Man gonna be awake? That's the question. V Man did call in this morning and uh he he was in good spirits. Yeah, you have to be flexible on the time. V Man doesn't seem like he's very punctual to me. No. Or awake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh Ferris Grimm using his free super chat for being an Asmaniac. You get one every month. Take best available or trade is the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to really simplify the draft, yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> I agree. How about this? Take a very good player. Yeah, uh, maybe even elite, an elite one. Yeah, yep. Take draft a Hall of Famer. Done. Uh, NY Jets Florida is next up. What's up, gentlemen? A uh, V man needs a woman to in order to have a double date. That that's the first. That's the first priority is to meet somebody in order to go on the first date. In order to get to the double date, so V Man has to work on the first date. Well, uh, V Man's had some dates before. It just we got to get some consistent ones. We'll we'll get there. The Met, the Met. I don't know if the Met ever happened. I'm I, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, no, it happened. Jet fan, v, oh, v Man's happen? like yeah, V Man's like George Washington or Abe Lincoln, whichever one oh, couldn't God. lie. That's V Man. Gotcha, Buffalo Jet fan. You you hit on my point just now. Um, you know if the rate if somebody's falling, one of the quarterbacks. And uh, or maybe even a Bo Nix or a Penix, the Raiders. The Raiders are going in with Gardner Minshew and um, Aiden O'Connell. That's not exactly yeah. a winning combination there. No. So thirteen and forty-four are definitely in play for a quarterback trade up, and it is an overpay. But of course, you are going to overpay slightly for a quarterback. Um, I think that would be an amazing spot to trade down to. You wouldn't have to go down too far, and you get your second. Then you can just go from there. Yeah, and if you think about it, you're really only you, you're not taking a quarterback, so you're really only trading down two spots. And then also, if Denver stays, like they might take a quarterback, so it could be just one position player off the board, and then you're you know you're getting almost almost free draft capital. Really, it feels like. Obviously, Minnesota probably moves out, so they're probably out of the equation or moves up. But yeah, I think 13 is that spot where I'm where I'm looking. I don't want to get too cute and go all the way back, you know, 18 to 20, and then. It's Tyler Guyton season on the offensive line. But I think, you know, 13 to 15 is a sweet spot. That's totally fair. Uh, Gary writes in, if we draft Bowers, we'll probably win the Super Bowl. Would you like to win the Super Bowl, Jake? Did somebody say Brock Bowers? I didn't know that. <laughs> you, had a, you have a resident Brock Bowers. Uh, what is it? What are they called now? Bowers bros or? I, I named them the Bauer Boys. That was me. Bauer Boys, got it. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I, th I think they would prefer to be uh, Bauer Bros, but I think calling them boys is more offensive. So I like that better. Yeah. Once if he's good, then they can be upgraded to to Bros. Yeah. Look, if he's good, I'll be a Bauer Bro. I just I'm trying to avoid a huge risk with the number ten pick in the draft. That's what I'm trying to avoid. You know. Yeah. If if he, he feels like really. Like he would be amazing or he would really regret it. <laughs> yeah. And like chances are the Jets aren't going to be the team. I hate to do this, but the Jets aren't going to be the team that like a historically tough position to evaluate and really brutal to draft in the top 10. The Jets are the team that's going to get it right. Like, like you think a Falcon fan loves the Kyle Pitts pick when they see Jamar Chase go two picks later. Like it, to me, it's just, it's too risky at 10 trade back. If you're going to take Bowers, I, you can't justify it at 10 when Tyron Smith's your left tackle. AVT's coming off back to back season ending injuries in October. Morgan Moses is 33. Like it doesn't make sense. Aaron Rodgers is 40. Like he'll raise your floor of your weapons. You already have. You're screwed if the O line all goes down. How much Henny are you going to drink if the Jets take Brock Bowers? Is the real question. Oh, it's going to be a tough <laughs> night. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't like hate him as a prospect, but I just, I don't want him at ten. Like, if you trade back to fifteen yeah. and got a second or a third, even I'd be on board with it. You know, I get it. I'm probably, I'm probably a little higher on him than you. Like, he's probably like the my least favorite option that I could live with at ten. If that makes sense. Yeah, like he's better than a quarterback or a defensive player. Like, I'm with you there. Right. 
and I think he's I I have him ahead of a few of the offensive linemen. Like I would take him over Fawanga, um, for example, or even like I don't know. Would you take like Brian Thomas Jr. over Bowers? I think I would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd I think I would. Go Bowers. I just I don't love the value of the tight end. I just feel like Thomas Jr. is more likely to like hit the ground running quicker. Yeah, he'd be a good fit too, probably for a trade back as well. I I do think there's a lot of smoke out there though. When everyone is linking Bowers to the Jets, like I think the Jets are trying to have last year not happen. Everyone everyone knew they were going to try and go tackle, but that was the yeah. perception. So I, I think they're totally – maybe they just love Bowers and they take him. But I, I do think there's a chance this is one giant smoke screen going on. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't know what to believe. I think that all the, the last few drafts, I mean, I know we all knew about Zach, but uh, Sauce was definitely not you know where the smoke was headed. It was like Ikemaquanu or Kayvon Thibodeau. Yep. And then even last year, like nobody knew about Will McDonald. The only thing that made me raise an eyebrow was Schrager because he has nailed the past like five or six Jets first round picks. And even last year, Schrager mocked uh, Luca Van Ness edge to the Jets who just went off the board two picks before McDonald. So it did when he put it out there, I was like, OK, that and there does seem to be some smoke there. I don't know. It's, it's tough to get a sense on how they would value him because they were they liked Michael Mayer last year, but he was more of an inline tight end. It's really hard to gauge on like how the team would feel about Bowers. Money, 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 money. Nice. Sonny yeah. Crockett. Five memberships have been gifted, baby. The following five people are now as maniacs. Shad Johnson, D1, King Saria, Joe the Jet, Sharif Inani, congratulations. You are now an as maniac. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Andrew's got a super chat for us. Neil and Rob could either get a word in edgewise. I'm sure that was a spirited lunch today, BJF. A spirited lunch on Long Island. <laughs> I'd love to hang out with Neil and Rob. Sounds like a good time. Oh, you'll meet him at a game this year. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. You know, it's always a good time. This next caller, Bobby Midnight. Hello, Bobby. Hey, how you doing, Buffalo <laughs> Jeff fan and uh, Jake? What's, What's going on, Bobby? When are you having that steak dinner? When is that? Uh, next month. Where at? It's an undisclosed location, Bobby. We can't have the paparazzi find it out. Oh, yeah, because you're too popular in New York. I remember that. No, no, not me. I mean, Neil, you know, let's just say Neil is a connected man. Oh, Neil. Oh, it's Neil's dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I would like to go in May. Yeah, that's fine. But then you said I live in Vermont. But yeah, I think the Jets should get the offensive tackle. Uh, Joe Alt. That's who I like for the Jets. And Jake, what time do you want me to call in WFAN for Knoble tonight? Bobby, whenever you call the fan and ask him about Knoble, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do it. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, and then Friday is my trivia. Make sure you tune into that Buffalo Jeff fan. I guess we'll I just say a trivia question on Fridays. Jake asked me to do it, so I would do it. That's right, Love Bobby. It. Yeah. I got a good one for Friday. Friday. I can't wait, Bobby. Can't wait. Bobby's going to give us a trivia question every week now, BJF. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he used to do a, 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 a YouTube channel with trivia on it. So we're like, all right. Bring him on. Let's do it. A lot of talent in the uh, waiting on the stream yard uh, line there. Air Razi checks in with a super chat. If doable, trade back and pick up a second round pick. Round one offensive tackle. Round two wide receiver. Round three offensive line. Round four wide receiver. Three O linemen. Coming off injuries, need Rodgers upright to get the ball to weapons. Building for the future this way. Thoughts? I would have no issue if you told me the Jets traded back and still went offensive line in the first round, third round, and fourth round, and they snagged a receiver in the second round. I think this is easier said than done as the New York Yankees have rallied in the ninth to tie up the game. But I am not going to sit here and, uh, you know, kill the Jets if they can't find a trade partner because I think it's a lot harder then people realize I think it's easier said than done to say trade back and get picks. Like sometimes the deals aren't there. Yeah. Cause you have to think about it from the other team's perspective. It's like, ah, we don't like any of these guys. Hey, you give us a bunch of stuff to come up and get this guy. We don't want, you know, I mean, when it's not a quarterback, it's, it's kind of tough to do that. Um, you, you think offensive line or pass catcher or guys 
that people want to come up for. And if you're not that high on him, then maybe somebody else isn't. So I still think the Raiders are kind of that spot or maybe even the Colts coming up for the number one corner off the board. I even think that's more likely than com- coming up for Brock Bowers. But as outlined, I think that's fine. I do think corner will be drafted in this draft higher than people think because the Jets have probably the best and deepest cornerback room in the league. But like four of the five guys they roster are on the last year of their contract. And I think a DJ Reed, are you going to extend Michael Carter, have him be the highest paid nickel, have Sauce be the highest paid cornerback ever and extend DJ Reed? I think maybe DJ Reed might be the odd man out. So I think corner uh, you could see in the third or fourth round. Comments, questions, super chats, cut the line. That's why we got a Hennessy Heisman. You better have seen that Henny emoji, Hennessy. JD getting ready to surprise us again. I mean, what would be the biggest surprise at this point? A uh, quarterback or defensive player? Like, feels like we've basically have broken down to a fine powder every prospect they could reasonably take. I think that besides quarterback, I think the biggest surprise that would that's somewhat feasible would be like defensive tackle like Jerzon Newton or Byron Murphy which who are both awesome and they kill it. I just, I just, you have to in my opinion, you have to draft an offensive player. So that would be like the biggest surprise that's feasible or even like Brian Thomas jr. At 10, who I haven't seen mocked a bunch, but if they really want to go pass catcher and they don't want to go tight end and the top three receivers are gone, I think maybe Brian Thomas jr. Um, wouldn't be a crazy reach at 10. I'd like to trade back and get him, but yeah, it's, it's tough to think of one that's really going to shock us. But then again, Will McDonald last year, I, I just don't think they're going to do that again. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, like, can, can they, like, they can't afford to do that again. Like, no. uh, we, we can't, we can't relive this Three again. NFL draft, the New York J E T S Jets. Come on. Select Will McDonald, linebacker, what? Iowa State. What the Let's fuck? Go. I can't believe this shit. All what right. the fuck? Oh, you do the hell to <laughs> can't do it again can't have it well wow. i think well i think will's a good player too it's just like about resource allocation at this point you know agreed agreed i, I like will mcdonald i think he'll be a good player too but like that's what that, that's in the past now take an offensive lineman a r- wide receiver or even bowers before you actually were to take a defensive tackle oh my god i'll cry draft night in vegas if they take a defensive tackle at 10 Oh, he better be Aaron Donald. <laughs> Dude, he better you yes, he better be from like day one, he better be like the best defensive player in the league. Yeah. And he be, he better be able to be a backup offensive lineman as well. He yep. better play both ways. That's what makes Knobel so valuable. He could play both he could play all you know, all 22 positions on the field. Yeah, he can long snap it to himself and punt the ball. Greg's up next on the hotline. What's up, Greg? Gentlemen, how you doing? What's up, What's Greg? Up, Greg? Um, maybe, maybe I can kind of, you know, shed some light on, on this thing here. I think the, the, the most important position is offensive line because we're helping Aaron Rodgers, but the X factor is actually going to be Brees Hall. I mean, he, he, um, he gained over almost a thousand yards with a wounded offensive line. What can he do with a, um, with the, with a healthy offensive line? And number two, how would how would Brock Bowers help? I know he'll help Aaron Rodgers, but you want to help Brees as well. How will Brock Bowers help Brees? All that's that's the question we have to answer. I mean, getting a wide receiver may may help um, Brees opening up, opening up, moving moving some of the defensive players off the line of scrimmage so he can break into the second level. But how is how is drafting Brock Bowers going to help Brees Hall in that respect? Well, I just think having a better offense in general will help Brees Hall because you're not going to have stacked boxes against Brees. So that opens things right. up. Like, like Bowers' presence alone adds another weapon, and that helps Brees Hall have more, you know, le- less down linemen and guys in the box to deal with. So, like, wet, regardless of position, a better weapon helps everything in that regard. I was thinking more of the speed, um, the speed, the, the speed point of view. Uh, with Brian Thomas as opposed to Bowers. Uh, Brian Thomas can stretch the field. I don't know how much Brock Bowers, and I love him. I love the guy, how much he can stretch the field. I mean, he can go up the seam. He can do other things. But how? what can he do that other wide receivers can? You know what I mean? Yeah, good call, Greg. Well, on that note, 
Sam's got a super chat about Brian Thomas Jr. here, so we'll kind of lump it all together with what Greg was asking about and the super chat. When you watch Brian Thomas Jr., break it down for us. Also, also that was ball four to Soto for those watching the Yankee game. But go ahead, B. Jeff. Uh, yeah, Brian Thomas Jr. is, I think there's been a lot of Christian Watson pro comps, which is the long, lanky, speedy, uh, vertical deep threat. I think that Romo Dunze, number one, plays a lot stronger, uh, plays through contact, and is a lot stronger at the catch point than Brian Thomas Jr. N not saying Brian Thomas Jr. struggles in that area, but Odunze is a lead at it. I think Odunze is a better route runner. I think Odunze gives you better yak. Uh, but it's it's no shade on Brian Thomas Jr. to say that he's not, you know, one of the top three receivers. Maybe, maybe I'm sure there's one champ in the league that likes him better than Odunze. Um, in terms of how and Brock Bowers would help Brees, Brees Hall, I agree, be a force multiplier. He does help your horizontal spacing a lot. The one thing that's, that I haven't heard discussed about Brock Bowers is that Aaron Rodgers has been pretty open that he, he does not like pre-snap motion. And in order to get the most out of Brock Bowers, you would have to have him in motion a ton. So I wonder if that's something Rodgers would be able to be willing to make an exception for. But also Bowers can line up at full but fullback. He can and, and people say he can't block in the chat. And no, he he's not gonna block like you know, prime like Mercedes Lewis is like an extra offensive tackle out there. But if you put him in the slot and he's blocking slot corners, yeah, he's gonna be a good move blocker and be a net positive to your run game if you're playing him in the slot. I agree. And I, I wonder what the Jets board is as far as like just stack all the weapons together. Like I'm guessing mm -hmm. they have Marvin one, but are we sure they wouldn't have uh, a Dunes eight two? I know this for a fact. Speaking with someone, there are NFL teams that have a Dunes eight as their number two receiver, neighbors three because they think a Dunes eight size gives them the edge. Like it, I know, I know even like Leger Dusable who does uh, you know analyst work for CBS, former Jet. He thinks a Dunes is the best receiver in the class. Like I. I think there, there, there's always that curveball in the top 10, or in this case, maybe the top nine. And that affects what the Jets do at 10 as well. Yeah, I mean, you never know. With I remember the that stacked wide receiver draft where the Bills traded up for Sammy Watkins, and we found out in about five seconds that Odo Beckham Jr. was the best receiver in that class. And I think he went like at 11. Um, yeah, Odun, I would personally go Marvin Harrison Jr., then Neighbors, then Odunze, then Bowers, like then Brian Thomas Jr. for in terms of the weapons. But yeah, I think you could rank them, especially Odunze and Neighbors. I know Daniel Jeremiah has Odunze as the third best overall player in the class. Um, obviously, he's a guy who's plugged in, who's worked in front offices before. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where where that stacks up for them. And then throwing the offensive line pieces in there, I feel like there's like 12 guys you could rank in almost any order. Yeah. Uh oh, oh, let's go. Sorry, Aaron Judge, big hit, bases loaded. My headphones just fell out. I can't hear a thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, he needed that. Let's go. 6-4 Yanks at the top of the ninth. Big hit for Judge. He's been slumping because he's coming back from the injury where he had no oh, I thought training. you were just fired up for my take, man. Uh, that was a great take, too. <laughs> uh, that was big. It's also big for my Yankee uh, money line bet we got going. I, by the way, sports betting being legal in New York again. Oh, I love it. It, it wasn't legal in Texas. Really? Wow. Yeah. Something something is legal in New York that was illegal in Texas. That's got to be a first. I know. Crazy. I don't I, I really don't. I, and selfishly, as a radio guy, you, you know how many sports ads I could have done on the radio show in Houston? Jake Asman here for insert sports book. If it yeah, was I always wondered why you weren't hooked up with one of those outlets. Wow. Okay. It's, it's crazy. Thank God. You know, obviously, we got underdog fantasy, which is not a sports book. But yeah, I mean, so now we're going to all be degenerates and gamble away our mortgage. Yeah, big hit by the captain there. All right. <laughs> Super chat. Jets carpet bagger. Cha ching. Any way to stick and pick for an offensive lineman? Then we trade a 2025 pick for Carolina's pick 39 or Washington's pick 40. Both have two high second round picks. What would it take? 2025 first and pick 185, more or less than get a receiver top of the second so he gives you the scenario there bjf do you understand it and then are you comfortable weighing in on it so the first part stick a pick then trade a 20 uh, gms are real it's really hard to get the, the the picks in the now are a lot more valuable than picks in the future so you'd have to overspend significantly um so I don't know, like would the maybe the Panthers would take next year's first for this year's second? Because think about it, the Jets would be a playoff team. So next year's first should be in the 20s compared to Carolina at 39. I don't know if that's in the cards. Uh both of would what would it take? 2025 first and pick 185. Yeah, that would I, I mean the points would probably match up there. 
then get a wide receiver in the top of the second. It's possible. I think the most realistic way to get a second round pick is to trade back and then kick in some extra stuff. I don't I don't like trading up from 72 to get in the second. It's expensive. You'd have to give up 72 and a fourth rounder. At that point, out of the top 55 players of the draft, I'd rather two players than one. Um, interesting scenario. I guess it could be possible. I think it's more likely that you get a second round pick by just trading out of 10. And then, you know, it, 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 I just wonder if there's a scenario where they could move back just a couple spots to get a third too. You know, maybe you don't get a second, but it, it, all of a sudden, if you get two thirds and you have two fourths, there's a way back into the second round if you wanted to do it. Right. It can give you more ammunition to move up. Or even if you like if you get a weapon in the first round and you just take two offensive linemen in the third round, it gives you a lot more flexibility. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You got time for one more call, BJF? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Dan Hills. Excuse me. Dan Hills. You're our final call with BJF. Then I'll stay on if there's more comments or questions. What's up, Dan? What's up, guys? Love both of you. Um, one, I've got a recipe for better chicken soup than Charles's mom. Oh, I'll, I'll, whoa, guaranteed. I'll share it tomorrow on one of tomorrow's shows. <laughs> All right, that's what we All call right. a tease in my business. You better come through. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Um, and then have you guys been watching Blewett's reviews? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love, love, and Joe Blewett will be joining this program for the very first time Saturday morning. So be ready for that, people. Yeah, I mean, he he's great. Um, I, interestingly, though, he has alt as about his, like, I don't know if you've been watching this, but he's kind of been dropping him down the board, and he sees him as, like, more of, like, his third tackle. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, he's not as high on alt as uh, most people are, but that's, you know, that's, that's what I mean. Like everyone and, and blue, it's as good as anyone, man, but everyone's got a different opinion. Like it's, it's an inexact science. And that, that's why like NFL teams don't get it right. A hundred percent of the time. So it's like, it, it's crazy, man. There's, I, I think more people than not have alt as the consensus top guy, but we don't know. No one sure. knows. Yeah. I get, I guess what I'm thinking though, is it only takes one team to agree with him or two teams to agree with him to jump in front and have alt drop down the board. So it would just be interesting. Also just, you know, as far as the Jets, and I, I don't, I don't see them taking Bowers. I'd be shocked, um, but I feel like there's going to be a curveball in the draft. And they just, just every year they they do something that you don't really expect. But personally, I'd love to see Odunze fall to them. Maybe if a couple people think the tackles, you know, line up more with Blewett's reviews, um, it'll go that way, and and the Jets might benefit from that. Yeah, look. Uh... Uh, your your thoughts on that, BJF? Yeah. Um, look, and the thing about Joe is he always he's going to show you exactly on a film like his reasons why. And uh, I know he was he said he wouldn't have drafted Evan Neal until the third round. Uh, he was adamant about that, and that was obvious pretty quickly that he was correct. I do. Joe Alt is my favorite tackle in the class. Uh, me and Joe are both higher on J.C. Latham than most, and I think that you know with the Chargers, I. The thing about the Chargers is they have a left franchise left tackle in Rayshon Slater, and Joe Alt has only played left tackle his three years at Notre Dame. So I don't know if the Chargers like took JC Latham at five would feel rich, but I know Connor Rogers on his most recent podcast said, look, said the same thing. He wouldn't, he said his, his jaw would not hit the floor if the Chargers took Latham at five. The league is a lot higher on Latham, according to Rogers, than um, like mock draft media. So, yeah, or even if the Chargers go wide receiver and the Titans just like one different – if they like Olu Fashionu better than Joe Alt, and they were kind of 1A, 1B for a while. If Joe Alt is there at 10, man, I I just think solving left tackle for a decade, which I think he would do, is something you can't pass up on. Like, I, And there's just not going to be a player, a, a weapon like Brian Thomas Jr., Brock Bowers. Obviously, Alt and Odunze are going to both be there. I think if Alt is there, he's got to be the pick for me at 10 if he falls. Yep, I think it's well said. BJF, anything you want to plug? Uh, just Buffalo Jeff fan on YouTube. Talk about this same team every day. So I appreciate you guys. No, <laughs> has a lot of familiar names in the chat. So you guys are the best. And, you know, we'll be talking ball soon. Can't wait. I'll talk to you. Uh, well, next. So next week, I'm, I'm I'm in Vegas. So we'll work out a time. I might have to push it back or we'll just save you for the Megacast Thursday in the weekend. But we'll, we will definitely hear from you soon because we this audience cannot wait to get your takes on all the, all the Jets draft picks. Appreciate it, man. Take care, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the Buffalo Jet fan. All right, a couple super chats to get caught up on here. Big fellow writes in, I still say J.C. Latham has child-pairing hips. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Latham's a freak athlete, man. I'll say that. Now, we got a super chat here from the Hennessy Heisman. says, 
Remember when we had to go offensive tackle round one, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, then free agency happened, right? Happens every year. Uh, like, I, I still think you, they should strongly consider offensive linemen if one of the big three receivers is not there. But they have done a nice job filling their main needs going to this draft. Now, I'd question, you know, just saying, well, we signed Tyron Smith, so we're good. Like, you got to look at the injury histories of these guys. But, you know, they, they have filled a lot of needs. And I think they still could add a Bakhtiari or a Donovan Smith and bring back McGovern post-draft. I think that's still in the cards. Alan writes in OJ cremated. Alan, you have to stop just writing random news things in this chat. Nobody, and I say this with all due respect, nobody cares about your random things that you throw in there, whether it's player contracts or news. We all have our phones. We all have Twitter. I simply put, cannot take it anymore. See you later. If the Jets get the good fortune of all being there at 10, if they don't take them, they should be shot. I mean, what are we doing? Also, Roger, stop with this whatever Justin Bieber nonsense in the chat. I, I can't. I don't know what we're doing today with all the nonsense. Good God. Aaron isn't as committed as a lot of the young guys. He's not going to sit and watch game film all weekend. And I think he's aging faster than other guys. Gary says, I appreciate the update, Alan. Appreciate you. Of course, the two trolls stick together. Gary, thanks for the time. We will see you later. Goodbye. Please stay away. I mean, Black Bowers is definitely like the greatest player in the history. I'm going to be like, I'm going to God, this draft needs to get here already. All right, let's get back to the calls. We got a legend on the line. Always love when this guy calls us. Dark Knight Steve is up next. What's up, Batman? What's up? What's up, y'all? Hey, uh, look at that hat. Look at that hat. Like it, huh? I love it. Promo Rip code Asman, huh? Not too shabby. Yep, I'm trying my best. Trying my best to live up to your standards. Um, <laughs> I, I, I agree. The draft cannot get here fast enough. You know, I think as fans, sometimes we start to see some of these moves, like fancy football picks. And what we need to all remember is this is a business still. And the D in Joe D stands for dollar store. Joe dollar store. He does not like to pay guys. There's no way he's going to take a first round pick on a tight end and pay Bauer some money, especially with the high potential of it not working out. It's just because even if he's God member one year with the Jets, you know, he's kind of on a tight leash. If he goes somewhere, it's going to follow him. So I, I can't see them going with Bowers. It's great for all these, you know, media analysis types to, like, you know, use it for clickbait. They're going to go with an offensive lineman. It's not sexy to talk about, or they're going to try to move and get a weapon. They need somebody to come in and work at day one, not only to give Rodgers a weapon, not only to help the receiver core, but these guys are on a short leash. There's no way they're going to take a potential tight end. I mean, he needs to have, like, you know, Travis Kelsey type numbers to really justify taking him round one. We don't have that kind of offense. It's not going to work. So we could all talk about it. It's fun. All these Bowers boys out there. I mean, he's a good player. I'm not going to knock the guy. You know, he's a good player. Um, he's going to, he probably will have a career in the NFL. I wish him well. I wish all these kids that come out of college well. He's just not a fit for the Jets. You know, and I, I truly believe, again, part of my secret spy stuff, there's some disinformation going on with the Jets. They're all playing games. Right, they're bringing Bowers in, thinking the Jets are going to get Bowers. So if somebody really wants him, they may try to work the trade move. So at the end of the day, it's fun to talk about. I can't wait for the draft to get here. Let's get the pieces that we need in play, and let's continue with free agency because you know these guys really have a short leash. Otherwise, they're all going to be gone. You know, they'll all be uh, wearing Hugo hats at home watching the game uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. So. That's all I got. I just I, I can't wait for this thing to, to, to just happen. I mean, again, like Bowers is a player, but he's not going to be a Jet. He, realistically, he's not going to be. Anybody who says he's going to be a Jet, I see these every day. These, these mock drafts come out. He's not going to be a Jet. I mean, you could just tell by some of <laughs> his analysis. They, they don't know the Jets, and it's just for, for views and clicks and all that stuff. So, you know, keep up the good analysis. You know, there's so much garbage of it out there. Steve, you're the man. Always great to hear from you, my friend. I, I don't think they're going to take him either, but this is a team that took Will McDonald last year out of nowhere, and no one had that, so you never know. But I do think there's a lot of smoke with this Bauer stuff. I, I do think there's some validity to that. 100%.
Johnny says, now we see why Jake can't go live during a Jet game. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no way. I get asked all the time, how come you don't do a live watch party? Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it for a preseason game. Because I, I don't care about that. But no, I, I can't do it. No way. You can send me all the super chats in the world. I just I can't do it. I'm too crazy. Speaking of crazy, you never know where the conversation's going when this guy calls in. The great Cheats fan is on the line as the New York Yankees have capped off their most impressive win of the season. A come-from-behind win. A rally in their bones, as Michael Kay would say. The New York Yankees have done it again. Cheats fan, you're up next. What's up, Cheat? Yo, uh, as you see in my thing, the Jets need to draft a lineman, you smucks. Might as well use New York terms since we're on the Jets channel. Uh, I have a feeling maybe if they go wide out, if they get the chance, like the only wide out I want you guys to take is Harrison. But like you've seen how four plays and Rodgers went down. Everyone's here seen how four plays Rodgers went down. You need another lineman. And then if they're good, that's five years of alignment. I, I'm pro offensive line as well, my man. I, I mean, I think I think I'll, I think a lot of Jets fans are, but the Bauer boys are out there. I mean, here's the thing. Not I'm like I like I don't understand why you all want to tie it in. I'm like, do you, if he becomes the next Jason Kelsey, we can, you can yell at Jake as much as you want. But look, uh, I hope he's the next Travis Kelsey. You know, like I hope he's as good as your okay, guy, Travis. You I, I just woke up from a nap. I'm like I. Like I over, I fell asleep during the stream because I got off work early, but and then I woke up. I said Jason, I would say Travis. But speaking of Jason, did you hear that he lost his Super Bowl ring? I saw the clip. I haven't, I haven't watched the uh, the interview. It was a and a thing of chili. Mm. I mean, that's one good. I mean, whoever cleans that pan is rich. Yeah. Now let me ask you, Cheats fan, what's the latest at Denny's? How's the Grand Slam special going? I saw uh, the commercial last night. Uh, it's going decent. I'm probably just going to start going back to like manual labor since it pays under the table. So, whoa, know- whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. I, let, let, let's, let's hit the dump button. No one heard that. Go ahead. You're going uh, back to manual labor. Yep. Yeah. 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 Hit the dump button on that. But I'm like, the thing is I'm like, and by manual labor, I mean like working for my, Like, I have a sibling and an uncle who, I'm not going to say who it is, but they own a lot of land in Missouri, and they're going to try to turn it into a mud park. And by working under the table, I mean, get a year's worth of mudding going out there, getting myself dirty. I like it. So you're uh, you're, going to be working hard. I mean, I used to clear brush when I was in my teenage years when I wasn't this big. I used to be 155 with a little four pack as a teenager. And I would go out there and clean brush and work on stuff. And they had horses right next to the place. So, like, I've seen actual animals be like Phillies being born. Well, so you watched Phillies, Phillies, Phillies giving birth to things and all that other stuff. You're, you're telling us you've watched a lot of horses have sexual relations. No, 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 no. I've seen, a ho- I've seen horses being born, like where I used to live. So you've seen them have intercourse? No. I've seen no. horses being born. I don't watch that stuff. Gotcha. I I'm not into that bestiality shit. So I can't like that. Um like, you know. hey, the Lord will strike you down if you're into that shit too, so watch out. Well said, Cheats fan. Well said. <laughs> what a call. Ah, uh, tremendous. After a call like that, I need to hydrate. With liquid IV. Folks, promo code Jake Asman at checkout. Use the link in the description and get yourself liquid IV and get it at a significant discount. 20% off with promo code Jake Asman. My favorite flavor, lemon live or strawberry liquid IV. It's always in my cup of water here. Helps me stay hydrated and deal with the Asmaniacs every day. All right. Boomtown up next. He's a big Bowers boy. Hello, Boomtown. Hmm. Chiefs fan, don't ever change, buddy. My God. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Bowers boys or Gary, I guess you're the president of the club. I have a challenge. Oh, boy. Love for you to 
do up an article, an essay, something in that form. And I would love for you to clearly articulate why Brock Bowers is the pick at 10. I'm tired of your nonsense takes like saying he's a weapon. Well, like there's dozens of weapons in this draft, Gary. Like we don't have to take Brock Bowers. I want you to just, just explain clearly why he's the guy. I just, I can't wrap my head around the fan base that wants to put a tackle or sorry, a a defense, a a tight end above taking offensive tackle and protecting our 40 year old quarterback. He's the only reason our window is open for the next two years. We got to keep him upright. I'm I'm pretty sure you're on the same page here, Jake, but I I put that challenge out there and I'd love for you to post that in the discord and the Patreon. And I, 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 it's, I'm anxious to read. Okay. If you want to hear from Gary directly, here you go. Gary. Hey, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I, I had the uh, YouTube going and I had it going on both ears. Sorry about that. Power boy. Will you be up, will you be up on that challenge, Gary? Will you do that for us? I, I yeah. You, you want me? To, I mean, how long do you want it to be? I can, you know, I can make it ten pages if you want. I can make it a hundred words. What? What? I mean, you want to just have a like a brief civil conversation on why i think he's the right pick i'd prefer it in word form but i'll tell you what if we want to set up a night on the discord and we can go in there i would be happy to have that conversation i it's odd to me that so many points just sort of slip off like a water off a duck's back it's just it's odd to me that you're so hyper focused on just one thing that's going to help the jets in your words it's brock bowers to the super bowl you have a guy who's an automatic mismatch wherever you play him, right? It's, it's like having Greek the Freak on your team. It's like, well, who's going to guard him? You're going to put a quarterback on on a tight end? Want to have him go one-on-one with a linebacker? Oh, he's going to eat that up. One-on-one with a safety? He's still going to eat that up. There's no match for him, and then you can line him up anywhere on the field. He's just a mismatch. He's a problem regardless of where you put him, right? Like, did you watch Zion Williamson yesterday tear up the Lakers? Think of a football version of that. What are you going to do with them? Like and then once he gets the ball, you can't bring him down. He's a, a unique player where there's no matchup for him. So he was doing well against college kids. He's going to be running against men here as well, right? There is okay. a- no. I, 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 that was my question to to Buffalo. It's like a lot of his yak looks mm-hmm. great. Is that going to translate in the NFL? That that I think he'll be fine. He's not going to have you know the highlight reel like he did in college, but no one does. But. I, I think he's going to get plenty of yak. He's going to get, you, you know, he's going to get plenty of balls. He's going to line up in, in many places, and he works in any offense. So at the bottom line, then let me put this out to you: You have Brock Bowers lining up for this season versus Tyler Conklin. What is the appreciable difference between the two? How, I mean, how, I many, lo- how many more touchdowns is Bowers going to put in above Conklin? I don't view it as an either or thing. I, it's an end okay. both thing. Like you can li- just like when. For uh, not the 49ers, the, the Patriots drafted Aaron Hernandez and they had Gronkowski. It's like, well, Aaron Hernandez is different. Aaron Hernandez is a super athlete, right? He, I know he couldn't block and stuff, and I'm not saying you know, but Aaron Hernandez was one of the best pass catching tight ends at the college level, probably the best one I'd ever seen until Bowers. So it's like, we're gonna find out, figure out a way to use these two guys together. I, I'm not saying that's that's it for Conklin. Jake's right, Conklin's an adequate to better than adequate tight end. Right, he's probably in the top half of tight ends in the league. He's a good player, but it's, I not, agree. One, it's not one or the other. I, I can put both guys on the field. I can put Brock in the backfield. I can put him on the end. I can put him in the slot. I can put him anywhere on the field. And it's, there, there, there are probably a ton of packages that we can come up with that have that feature both. Of them. All right. Oh, good to go. Okay. Yep. So, are injuries not a concern for you whatsoever? Injuries, it's football. It's it's a contact sport. Injuries are always a concern. I agree. So is it easier to bring in an offensive tackle or is it easier to bring in a tight end if we get hurt at one of those positions? Well, a good one? <laughs> I mean, to bring in a good one, tackle's harder to replace. I'm not against taking a tackle, right? Like if they took Latham, Latham or Freshano, I understand it. But what I, what I want you to understand is like this is taking Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan, right? Like – you're, you're, you're drafting a need. And I think that we're close enough to Super Bowl where if you need to fill a specific need, I'm not going to get mad over it. But understand what you're leaving on the board if you do that. If you, if you take 
Lado, at 10, lay them at 10. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not mad about it. I understand what you're doing, right? Like offensive line was an absolute disaster last year, the year, but probably the last three years. Like it was horrible. So I, I get it. But when you do that, you're leaving a uniquely talented player on the on the on the draft board, right? Like back in 1997, I think it was 96, my Nets needed a shooting guard. They thought they were close yeah. to winning. So they took Kerry Kittles and left Kobe Bryant on the board. Now, Kittles was a good player, helping get to back-to-back finals. So, okay, it's a good pick. Look what you left on the board for fit. That's Gary, the point about uh, hold on a second. You compared, you compared Bowers to Michael Jordan. I just can't let and that Kobe, go. And Kobe Bryant. And Kobe yeah, Bryant. that's ridiculous. Like, cause like that, that, and also the NBA is so much more of a superstar sport. Football is not like that. Like, it's like, it, it, I, there's no way we could like do make that comparison. Sam Bowie and Bowers and Kerry Kittles and and Kobe. Come on. But but the point is, be, if you're gonna make that pick, if you're gonna take it off an uh, offensive tackle, that's fine. But understand that you're leaving a potential superstar on the board for someone else to take. Well, that's, okay, well, that, that's the fork in the road, Gary. It was the butt that you said about a minute ago. You, you acknowledge all the injuries that we've had for the last two years. Clearly, you watch the games. But then you say, but I'm not ready to get past that point where we need to keep our quarterback upright. We only have two years left with Aaron Rodgers, probably. Maybe, maybe three. I'm not prepared to put in another season with, with our quarterback under duress. I, I'm just not. Then I'm not – I don't think you're crazy or stupid or wrong for taking an offensive tackle. I really don't. If it's my pick and there's a uniquely talented guy on the board, I'm taking that guy and I'll live with the consequences. I, I, I'm I, not, I don't think taking an offensive attack, like if we didn't get the, the, the offensive line, all of them, if we didn't get three quality offensive linemen in the draft, I'd probably be on the same page as you. But did we somebody did. say Brock Bowers? All right, that's enough Bauer debate for the for this segment there. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> good back and forth, though. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Good job by Boobtown. Good job by Gary. Good points are made. Gary loses me when we do the Jordan thing, but I get it. John writes in, I love when Jake forces interactions like this. Hey, it's show business, man. That's what we're doing here. Dark Knight Steve checks in. Are we becoming a pass first team? Where are the targets for Bowers coming from? Who do we take the touches away to justify Bowers at 18 or at 10 or 18? I, if you take Bowers at 10, Steve, he's your number three receiver. And and here's your order of targets. Garrett, Brees, Bowers, then Mike Williams. Brees Hall had 76 catches last year. Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. If you're talking just target share, Bowers you need to be number three on that list with Mike Williams number four. Or maybe you flip Mike Williams and, and Bowers. That's where the targets are going. He better If they take Brock Bowers, he better be one of the best tight ends in the league this year. No excuse. See, Kyle Pitts went to Atlanta. They, they have no quarterback play. You can blame it on that. He still is not worth the pick, though. But, like, Bowers is coming into a situation where he's got a Hall of Famer throwing to him. He better be great right away. Unreal. Unreal. Snowball writes in, when Gary says he's driving, who yells shotgun? <laughs> Uh, Mike writes in when Rodgers gets injured, but you have a tight end, you gonna feel better. I love that, so true, so true. I mean, unreal. Unreal comments, questions, super chats. They always cut the line. What a show! What a show! Appreciate everyone for their support. Pittsburgh Mike, he writes in, 
Out of all the options for the draft, picking Bowers at number 10 is bottom of my list. I'd much rather trade up for Marvin Harrison Jr. Sticking at 10 and drafting Rome or trading back and getting a second. I mean, if you tuned in late, we gave you the five best case scenarios for Douglas in the draft, according to the Buffalo Jet fan. I would have the first four a lot higher before we got to number five, which was stick and pick Bowers at 10. Super chat from John. He writes in, he cuts the line. I want a receiver, but play action of Bowers could be fire. Look, I'm not saying he's not a really good player. I just don't love the fit at 10. JK writes in with a super chat, his free super chat. Hack it in the post game after week nine. You know, I just realized this Bowers kid is actually a pretty good receiver. I mean, the good news is Aaron Rodgers is the offensive coordinator. So, but I think Buffalo Jeff Bay made a good point. A lot of Bowers' skill set is that you put him in motion and line him up all over. Rodgers doesn't like motion, he likes to just get to the line of scrimmage read the defense, and go. He doesn't need, like, tricks, guys in motion. They don't run that type of offense with Rodgers. Maybe they would adjust, but I, I don't know. Mike says, do we know how much pressure would be on Bowers? Pick 10 in New York. I'd be enormous pressure. There'll be pressure on anyone they take, though, but if they take a tight end, yeah, it's going to be magnified. No question about it. It's just how it goes. All right, really fun show today. Both of them were great. I want to thank everyone who took time to tune in. Uh, tomorrow on the show, we're going to break down Brian Thomas Jr. as a possible option for the Jets. That'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern with Fialco. I'll have a, our, our typical morning stream coming at you. Got some really good insight from Daniel Jeremiah that we're going to talk about specifically on the Jets. So that's likely coming Tomorrow, Joe Blewett is booked already for Saturday. Joe Douglas is speaking to the media Friday morning, so we're going to try and go live after that. So, look, drafts just Aaron Rodgers days away, eight days away until Joe Douglas does this. So we're going to be breaking it down, and obviously our Circa Megacast is next week out in Vegas. Hit the like button on your way out of here. It goes a long way towards this channel continuing to grow. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Let's go to Lane, who's up next. Hello, Lane. Hey. Oh. Hi. Hello, Oops. Lane. How is everything? Yes? You're on the air, Lane. Oh, hello. Hello, Lane. Hi. So, yeah, I'm happy about the way the Jets played played today. And, you know, they moved the ball, and they did great. Look, okay. Who, and I mean, I know it was raining out. Did you see the game? No, I didn't watch it. What happened? Well, they won. They <laughs> took, and the other team lost. Lay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, holy crap, I can't believe it. Lane Kerner's in the house. What's up, Lane? I'm talking about sports on my phone. Yeah, I mean, great game. I saw the game, and I watched the Jets game the other day, and they lost. They tried. They played against the um, – it reminds me of the Ace Ventura movie <laughs> with him going into the tank. That movie was cracking up. Did you see that? That I, movie? I, yeah, I have. The Jets should have won that game. I watched it. I just couldn't believe it that they lost. You have to move the ball down the field. And they just didn't like it was um, Bruce Hall, Robert Scala. Um, more news. Do you think maybe they'll win next year? I'm not quite sure what you mean by do I think they'll win Well, next? do you think maybe they should draft a quarterback or a um, a QB? Yeah. I, 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 I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Man, and I can go. go. Um, and I have some other stuff, too, to talk about. I think, do you think, yeah, but anyway, stay the Jets. Yeah, I like the Jets uniforms. I just don't want me to keep you on because you probably have some more people online waiting to talk about sports. Okay, that's all. Have a great day and watch the game next week. Great call, Lane. Well, Lane train, folks.